together, like so. They take them apart again and take them together again. And you do this in a quick succession, in a rapid fashion, coupled with cheering and yelling and throwing of underwear. Hey, if it's worth trying once, it's worth trying twice. The I don't like you throwing of underwear is very different than the I like you throwing of underwear. Now, as I mentioned, we are one of the last of the traveling 10 in 1 carnival style sideshows. As a matter of fact, there's less than a handful of us left. And as there are so few sideshows left in the world, there are certain acts that we feel both morally and ethically obliged to perform. And I'm going to start today off with one of those acts. This act is called The Human Blockhead. And it starts with this. This is a very small claw hammer. It's a real claw hammer. The head is really made of metal. The handle is really made of wood. And the paint job is really bad. And with this hammer, of course, comes a nail. Every good hammer should come with a good nail, and this hammer is no exception at all. This is a 40-penny nail. It is five and one-quarter inches long. It is solid, stainless steel. It's made in, I don't know, Pakistan or something. It is a barn nail. And what I'm going to do for you today is I am going to take this hammer and use it to drive this nail directly into the center of my skull. Now we're going to do this on the count of three, and I'd like you all to count along with me because I need the help. I went to public school in Kentucky. So here we go on the count of three. One, two. You were going to let me do that. Nobody, I, I really need you all to really consider what life choices you've made that have led you to just, play. I'm just teasing. I'm just joking. I'm just kidding. I said I was going to drive the nail into the center of my skull. I held it right there. I swung the hammer. We counted to three. But I was just playing around. Because that is not the center of my skull. And I promised you the center. If you want to find the center of my skull, first you draw a line down the middle of my face this way. A line across the middle of my face that way. And what you're going to find is that the center of my skull is right about there. And so that is where we're going to drive the nail. One more time on the count of three. One. You like that joke? Nailed it. <laughs> now that, of course, was the easy part of the act, hammering the nail deep into my childhood memories. Now, of course, comes the hard part of the act, getting the nail out. And we're going to do that today with a feat of strength. I'm going to pull that nail with my bare hands. But first, I want to loosen it up a little bit, so I'm going to get a hold of the head of the nail and just give it a twist. Now, give it a wiggle. And out it comes, just like that. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, no, never mind. Never mind. All right. See, I, thought, I thought there was blood on there. But it's not. Now, as I mentioned, that act is called The Human Blockhead. It was brought to this country in the year 1929 by a man named Melvin Burkhart or St. Melvin, as we refer to him, the patron saint of weird people who don't grow up. <laughs> However, that means that that act is now nearly a hundred years old. A hundred years old, and I think, in my humble opinion, it is time to update the human blockhead. It's time to bring the human blockhead into the 21st century. And there is no one better poised to do just that than yours truly, because I am the only human blockhead in the world that can do what I'm about to do for you. But before I do it, before I show you what I would like to show you, there are a couple of things I need to get out of the way first. Like these. Ew. And these. What's the matter? Is there something in my teeth? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in these in between than anybody else. Ta-da! <laughs> this 
I now present to you a variation on the act known as the human blockhead that I like to call, yes, I can get uglier. Sideshow with us. I'd like to introduce you to someone very special to me. Someone very near and dear to my heart. Because she's my boss, she signs my paychecks, pays me to say that. Welcome to the stage, the one, the only, thank God, Miss Trashy. I've been there this whole time. Hi guys, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, we'll work on it. So the act I'm about to show you guys is an act that combines three of our most favorite things in the Tinderbox Circus Sideshow. The first thing is something dangerous, which is me with a bullwhip. The second thing is something sexy. I love 
love you. Oh, they love you. Turn around, stick it out, show the world. Bubble, 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 bubble. Creepy <laughs> gone after dark. straight like it bought you dinner. <laughs> Remember parents, if your kids get the jokes, that's your fault, not ours. <laughs> the second joke. Those are breaking good today. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Souvenir, souvenir. We're gonna put at risk those beautiful pearly whites you saw earlier. <laughs> They're brand new, we just bought them. Alright. Are you ready? Okay, are you ready? On the nose. The incredible skills of Miss Trashy. As we move on, I'm about to show something to you that is truly horrific, truly terrifying, absolutely disgusting. But I absolutely have to. I have to do it. I am about to show you the bottom of my feet. Those of you in the front row, Never been to the beaches of New Jersey. Now you know what they smell like. And I'm taking my shoes off and showing you the bottom of my feet because I have a special skill. I have a special ability. And that ability goes all the way back to my childhood. As a very young Captain Darren Von Awesome. I grew up in eastern Kentucky, in the mountains of Appalachia. Meaning that I did not own a pair of shoes until I was six. Which has left my feet hard, scarred, calloused. Allowing me to perform the following act for you. I present to you now, The Bed of Blades. Five razor sharp machetes purchased from a local Walmart. <laughs> I'm not sponsored, but I am poor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bare feet and place them upon the blades. I'm going to press down using my not inconsiderable weight and balance myself across the blades. It looks a little something like this. It's cold. You look way more nervous than I am. And I'm the one that has to do this, okay? So I need you to calm down. <laughs> boring show if I just got up here and stood around looking cute for you. So now I'm going to do something a little extra. I'm going to turn 
in a circle of top of these blades. Now to do that, I'm gonna have to take my feet and move them from one blade to two. Then I have to move my second foot to match. And now, the most difficult maneuver of all, the no look step behind. Giving you the best show at Creepy Guy. <laughs> Family friendly show, Trashy. It's a family friendly show. You'll have to book us for a private event if you want the striptease version. You think that's a joke, but there is actually a striptease version of this that I'm not allowed to do here. <laughs> One more time. The no look step behind to balance, not on two blades but on a single foot, on a single blade. Ladies and gentlemen, no cuts, no scratches, no bruises or bleeding. I am gonna regret that decision in the morning. And I'm going to regret the next one as well because I called this item the bed of blades. And it would be no kind of bed at all if nobody laid down on it. Now physically, this item works very similarly to a bed of nails. And how a bed of nails works, for those of you who haven't been to the fun physics classes, is it is a distribution of weight. You distribute the weight evenly across all of the surfaces so that there is not enough weight on a single surface to penetrate the skin. Now a bed of nails typically has around 664 nails. This has five blades. And because of a lovely arch in my back that gives me such a voluptuous back, <laughs> I will only be able to lay on four of these blades. Now I am not of an inconsiderable weight, but once I lay down, I want to really do something to impress you. I really want to do something to impress you with this. So we're going to add a little bit of weight once I'm down on these blades. And that little bit of weight comes in the form of this board right here. We're going to use this board and lay it upon my chest. Then once this board is in place, we're going to add some more weight. We're going to add all 297 pounds of mist prep. All 265 pounds of... All 73 pounds of mistrashy. My body balanced atop the blades. The board balanced atop my body. And Miss Trashy balanced atop the boards. Now, I'm gonna take my wallet out. Don't worry if anyone tries to steal it, it's empty. I'm a professional performer. If anybody needs to check, if there's any padding or anything back here. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. Get in there. Woo! Call me later. Here we go. Down onto the plane. precariously atop my stomach. First, Miss Trashy's right foot. And then, I'm turn my head, because we're from Kentucky, but we're not that from Kentucky. <laughs> there she is, the bed of blades. Man, I really should have gone to the bathroom before this act. Ugh. And now, the grand reveal. Was he successful? Did he die? No cuts, no bruises. I didn't even rip my very expensive $8 shirt. <laughs> oh. See, I get asked all the time, 
when we're out on the road, like, hey man, you're Captain Darren Von Awesome, you're out on the road like eight months out of the year. How do you keep your girlish figure? That's how we were pressed into shape every night. Where'd the mic stand go? <laughs> awesome. Professionals. Now, I have one more act I want to share with you before we go. Before we bring on our next entertainer of the day, there is one more act I want to share with you, and yes, I am going to do it very well. As I said at the beginning of the show, as I started the show, I mentioned that we are one of the last of the traveling 10 in 1 side shows. And as we are one of the last of the 10 in 1 side shows, there are certain acts that we feel both morally and ethically obliged to perform. And like we started the show with one of those acts, likewise we will end the show with one of those acts. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to swallow some swords. Now to qualify as a sword swallower with the International Sword Swallowers Association of America, you have to swallow a sword that is no thinner than three quarters of an inch wide and no shorter than 15 inches. This is an 18 inch sword. And if you notice, there's a slight curve to this sword making it even more difficult to swallow. Now what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to take this sword and I'm going to lick it up one side and down the other. I'm going to put the tip of the sword and just the tip of the sword into my mouth. I'll slide the sword down my throat and you will keep your jokes to yourselves. Now why do I lick the sword? I licked the nail at the beginning of the show and you may be thinking to yourself, hey Captain Darren Von Awesome, why do you lick all of your props? And there's two reasons, there's two answers to that question. One, it establishes both dominance and ownership. This is my sword. Try it the next time you go eat with your friends. Lick the food, that's your food now. And two, the second reason is because this, like so much else in life, works best when both hot and wet. That is free advice. This next sword has a bit more length. That was an 18 inch sword. This is a 22 inch sword, which means this sword will travel all the way down into the very pit of my stomach. The point of the sword will rest on the bottom of my stomach, nestled amongst last night's dinner and this morning's coffee. And once the sword is all the way down there, I'm going to make this act twice as difficult, twice as dangerous, because once the sword is inside my body, I will bend over at the waist, doubling my body in half, causing all of my internal organs to squish, slip, and slide around the edges of the blade. I'll then stand back up and pull the sword from my body, stand in a heroic and triumphant pose, and you will all cheer wildly. And if you don't, I remind you that I have a board full of swords up here the least effective threat. That discoloration on the blade as I pull it from my throat, that's perfectly normal. 
uh, is so normal that in the industry, in the science show business, we have a name for that discoloration. When a sword swallower pulls a sword from their body and there's discoloration on the blade, we call that lunch. Yeah. How about something a little different? Uh, okay. Okay, I have a request. Uh, she, I, I've been told that, that uh, she said, hey, Captain Derek, sword swallowing is just not, not doing it. You need to do something cooler. You need to do something even cooler. Uh, so, there we go. <laughs> That's such a dumb joke. I'm going to swallow yet another sword for you today. I'm going to swallow this sword right here. This sword right here. This sword is, as its predecessor, 22 inches long. It is like its predecessor, three quarters of an inch wide. It is like its predecessor, solid steel. And I'm going to swallow this sword down my throat. Now you're saying to yourself, aside from the sunglasses, Captain Darren, you literally just did that. I know. But I'm not just going to swallow this sword. I'm not only going to swallow this sword. This time, I'm going to swallow this sword and these two with it, three swords down the throat at the same time. A lot like some of your internet search histories. Whenever I make that joke, I make it a point never to look at anybody, never to gesture towards anybody, never to point at anybody, and yet everybody turns to their friend and goes, ah. Now, before I swallow these, I'm gonna line these swords up in a perfect row, just like this. Now, I do this so that you can see the handles of the swords are perfectly lined up, perfectly symmetrical. And the reason I do that is because if you watch the handles of the sword, you will see how this act is going. Because if you see the handles of the swords and they do that, then the blades of the swords have done this and gone into some very important internal organs I happen to have called all of them and that motion that motion will absolutely kill me if that happens i will die within five minutes i will die spectacularly but it's not still so the hate oh the energy i get from that joke i love it here we go three swords down the throat the same sister and my best friend, Miss Trash Heek. And I have been your host. My name is Captain Darren Von Awesome, and we are from Lexington, Kentucky, the Tinderbox Circus Sideshow. <laughs> and we're not done with you yet. <laughs> you see, uh, we have a special bonus act right here at the end of the show. It's tradition in the sideshow to have a special bonus act at the end of the show. It goes back hundreds of years, and by hundreds, I mean 100 years. This act is called the blow-off, and this is how it works. You see, believe it or not, surprisingly enough, this is our job. This is how we pay our bills and our bar tabs, and most of the time, yes, those are medical. So if you've appreciated what you've seen today, if you've enjoyed your show, we invite you now to reach deep 
into your pocket or purse, or the pocket or purse of the person sitting next to you, and take out one of those green pieces of paper that has a number and a dead guy on it. If that number is a one or a two, I have a very lovely hat for you to place that one or two dollar bill into, and I will thank you for every penny that goes into the hat, from the deepest, darkest part of my sick, twisted little heart. But if you bring us, say, something more than a 